Did you know that the Korean Dene were historical enemies? For centuries, they fought among themselves, resulting in generations of animosity and unending violence. In 1713, a Dene woman, Tanal Tsur, got captured and enslaved by the Cree. She managed to escape, found her way to an HBC trading post, and from there, would set off on a peacemaking journey. She trekked across what is northern Canada today, eventually finding her Dene people and bringing peace between them and the Cree. This is her story. Let's get right into it. Tanal Tsurza's story takes place between 1713 and 1717, during a time of great change for the Korean Dene. Starting in 1670, the Hudson's Bay Company had started building forts along the coast of James Bay and continued to gradually go up into the coast of both eastern and western Hudson's Bay. There, they started trading with the Cree, who were one of the largest indigenous nations at the time, and today are the largest indigenous group in Canada. The Cree were some of the first people to start trading with the English and became increasingly powerful within the context of the fur trade. They occupied strategic geographic positions across the modern day provinces of Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, and would even expand to what is Saskatchewan and Alberta in later years. Their population spread allowed them to control access to key trapping areas and thus made them indispensable to the English. Because of this, they were able to secure European goods like knives, boiling pots, and most of all, guns. The Cree didn't hesitate to use this new and powerful technology to repel any of their competitors. Tensions ran high between them and the Dene, with both vying for the control of hunting grounds. However, the Dene didn't have access to all this European technology because the Cree blocked off their access to English forts. No access to guns meant that the Dene couldn't defend themselves as effectively against their rivals. They were at a significant disadvantage, and one day, Tanadzur would fall victim to a Cree raid. In 1713, Tanadzur got captured by the Cree. Her, along with another woman, would become slaves and spend more than a year in captivity. During this time, she observed what kind of goods they were able to acquire and how these improved their quality of life. She also learned the Cree language along with their customs, which would prove to come in handy in the future. After more than a year in captivity, Tanal Tsur, along with her friend, managed to escape. The journey back home would be tumultuous, spending another whole year trekking the harsh environment of what is northern Ontario and Manitoba today. During this time, her friend died, and Tanal Tsur was left to fend for herself. She would never be able to find her way back to her homeland, which she encountered instead was a group of hunters who were working for York Factory. York Factory was one of the first forts that was built by the Hudson's Bay Company. Established in 1684, it was the main base of operations for the company's fur trading business at the time, where they were trading with the Cree and learning more about this unfamiliar environment. The York Factory hunters then brought her back there, where she would recover from her brutal last two years. During her recovery, she met the governor of the fort, James Knight. James Knight wanted to expand the fur trade northward, but couldn't because of ongoing conflicts between the Korean Dene. So when James Knight met Tanal Tsur, he saw someone who spoke both languages, knew the customs, and could facilitate communication between both groups. Tanal Tsur herself wanted peace between the two nations. She thought about the benefits peace could bring to her people. It would give them access to key European goods like knives, muskets, which would not only help them hunt more efficiently, but also defend themselves against other enemy nations like the Inuit. Both of them devised a peacemaking mission. Her, along with an Englishman called William Stewart, would lead a group of 150 Cree men to her homeland to make peace with her people. In June of 1715, Tanal Tsur, William Stewart, and the 150 Cree left York Factory and headed for Dedende, the land of the Dene. In a complete reversal of roles, Tanan Tsur was the undisputed leader of the group. She was barely a couple of months removed from being held captive as a slave, had witnessed the deaths of her friend, and held countless memories of family who had fallen to the Cree. Now she herself was leading a delegation of Cree, thinking of the benefits peace could bring to her people. 
and the journey itself was incredibly difficult. See, the group was now marching in what we call the Barren Grounds, territories that are mainly in Nunavut and the Northwest Territories today. The Barren Grounds are also known as the Arctic Tundra, where the ground is frozen, there's almost no trees, barely any edible plants, and almost everything that can be eaten needs to be hunted. It's an unforgiving environment where your survival is always on the line. The journey was so harsh that after a couple of months, many of the Cree had returned back to York Factory, unwilling to risk their lives trekking the barren grounds. The group was thus left with Stanaldsur, William Stewart, and only a dozen Cree. Even worse, when the group arrived close to their destination, they found a group of deceased Dene who had been murdered by a separate group of Cree. The remaining Cree didn't want to continue, fearing retribution from Tanatsu's people when they would arrive at the camp. So what Tanatsu proposed was this. The group would stay there for 10 days while she would continue the journey by herself. She would find her people, bring them back to the camp, and make peace. In a time where peace seemed so improbable, Tanatsu persisted, showing her leadership in times of hardship and her ultimate devotion to the cause. And sure enough, within those 10 days, she found her people. Hatred and violence, which had persisted for generations on end, it was unimaginable to think of peace. After having been separated for two years, Tanatsu was finally seeing her lost friends and family. She couldn't waste too much time though, and needed to get back to her camp as soon as possible. She explained to her people that peace between the Dana and the Cree was not only possible, but essential if they were to survive as a nation. She persuaded them to accompany her to her camp, where William Stewart and the dozen Cree were staying. Once there, they were able to sit down, have civil discussions, with Tanaltsur being the leading voice. And really, who could have been a better figure of forgiveness, of moving on, than Tanaltsur herself? She had been captured, enslaved, and had lost countless friends and family at the hands of the Kree. Despite all of this pain, she had unlimited determination, and there was nothing that could derail her from her ultimate goal, which was to better the lives of her people. Here's a quote from William Stewart who describes the sheer will of Tanaltsur. She has a devilish spirit, and I believe that if there were 50 of her countrymen of the same carriage and resolution, they would drive all of the northern Indians in America out of their country. She made them all stand in fear. She scolded at some and pushing of others and forced them to ye peace. After 10 days of negotiations, the Korean Dene would hold a peace ceremony, forgiving each other for past cruelties and enshrining peace for generations to come. The HBC would subsequently build Fort Churchill, which is in Churchill, Manitoba today, where the Dene would be able to trade fur for European goods. Tanatsu would sadly be unable to see the construction of that fort because she passed away in 1717 from a fever. After her passing, James Knight would give her a ceremonial burial, honoring her service for her people and recognizing her diplomatic achievements. James Knight, HBC employees, and even the Cree respected Tanatsu. They admired her skills as a diplomat, as a translator, and ultimately as a peacemaker. She's important in Canadian history, not simply because she's a woman, but because she's a strong woman. She's a figure of strength, of resilience, and gracefulness, and devoted her life to peace and prosperity for her people. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd appreciate a like and subscribe to push out this video and spread knowledge about Canadian culture and Canadian history. You can find me on other platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Spotify for more content. Thank you so much and I'll see you at the next video.